Greetings and salutations, you beautiful people. Welcome back. Another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. And we are not even a week removed from the disaster that was the ending of the LCS split for Cloud9 Super Team. And I guess as soon as they got eliminated, Jack was getting on the phone, making some calls, because now we got two tasty rumors coming in. Not fully confirmed yet. The coaching stuff a little more confirmed uh, than the player move. But I thought at least at most they'd make some coaching staff changes. That appears to be true. We are bringing the old band back together. Miffy is out. Reaper returning to Cloud9. He was last over in the LJL coaching. He went to 100 Thieves before that, if you remember. So it's been a few years since he's been on Cloud9. But obviously, Blabber. He's very familiar with. I think there was a bit of crossover with Vulcan. Maybe one split when he was last there. Uh, so very familiar face returning. Oh, man. What's old is new. Once again, all things are right in the world. Coma is at T1. And Reaper has now rejoined Cloud9. Yes, we thought this would be possibly one of the type of actions that would be taken by Cloud9 heading into this offseason. And pretty good indication that it wasn't just us that was disappointed and a bit peeved off at what was an underachieving split for Cloud9 because Jack was in that same boat as well, making sure that these changes happen quite quick. I do want to take a moment. I think a lot of people are forgetting the success that Mithy had last year with this Cloud9 roster. And I think that's an important thing to check when you're looking at where the new factor in this disappointment and moving on from him at this situation for Cloud9. Because I think when you're looking at this Reaper transaction and what he's going to bring and what type of uh, changes he can offer to the team and the environment, Yes, that's going to be a positive for what you would already think is going to be Cloud9. But we know that there's another move in the pipeline for Cloud9 as well that I think that this Reaper move is really meant to shore up on. Yeah, it makes more sense when you look at both these moves together. That being Thanatos coming over from D-plus challengers who we thought might be starting this year at the LCK. But apparently D-plus was a little hesitant to have two rookies in their starting lineup. And now... He's going to get paid, likely on Cloud9, to replace Fudge, who was definitely the one guy people were probably on the chopping block in terms of moving actual personnel. But you combine Thanatos with Reaper coming over, and those moves together, to me, really signal Berserker. We heard you being upset about how things were playing out with this team. We're bringing two Korean guys to make things easier for you obviously reaper as head coach will help thanatos adjust to an entirely new lifestyle that he's going to be living but reaper more than any other coach in the lcs is going to make sure this team takes scrims seriously which again if you watch any of the behind the scenes stuff with c9 that's what berserker's calling for well we know that that is going to be a necessity for this team moving into the summer split and given the strength that we actually have seen from the LCS, and I mean strength as far as, you know, axing the two teams, eight teams, the condensing of it, all these other things, and where the live patch then factors into it, having that type of practice environment that Reaper is going to set for the team, for players like Jojo Pion, like Blaver, who I feel pretty good guesses to say can maybe get a little lost in the sauce sometimes, even in a practice environment. It's going to be a good thing for them. You mentioned Thanatos with Reaper. I think that's also another factor, helping shepherd him into the league, into the LCS in the situation, bring him over. Uh, you know, one of the other factors that you look at with this one, talking about him replacing Fudge, you listen to the voice comms of Cloud9. Well, there's a lot of voice comms that we do listen to, and we say, we don't hear anything. We need to hear more. We need more activity. You needed less from Cloud9 because you had five different voices all saying five different things. Three of them might have been focused on the game. Two of them weren't focused on the game. Whatever was going on. One less voice. I'm pretty sure Thanatos isn't going to be expected to be very vocal early on. That will be something that I think Cloud9 is, is going to appreciate at least maybe for the first little bit. And that's, you know, on paper, this looks great. Thanatos probably going to come in and completely smurf the laning phase, get even more early game leads for Cloud9. That wasn't the issue. Throughout the entire split, they were better. They were a better early game team this year than they were in 2023. And those communication issues, 
exactly the things that need to be sorted out. Sure, Fudge being one less voice there, but that still just means whatever combo of Blabber, Jojo, and Vulcan need to step up and be able to help lead this team through the mid to late game. Reaper will probably help in a big way with that as well. Yeah, that's the other factor that I think is going to be the, the thing that really does push him. Is going to be that strategy change with Reaper coming in and that focus for it. You anticipate, yes, Thanatos coming in and, and how you... The immediate reaction is most likely expecting just to smash early game even harder. And then you do realize, okay, well, yeah, but you're, you may, you'll have a little bit more power, a little bit more advantages. You're still going to have the same issues you got to tackle in that mid to late game decision making. That's where Reaper comes in. That's where the coaching factor has to play in for Cloud9. Pretty immediate option right away, right away. Clear from Jack that this is not what it's going to be for this Cloud9 team. You've got to step it up or else we're going to make changes like this go on. We've seen what happened with 100 Thieves and Quid. We saw them go through that development and they've got an LCS MVP out of that situation. We've got Berserker on the team. That's worked out pretty darn well. Let's roll the dice now. Added insurance of Papa Reaper. I love this for Cloud9. I mean, the precedent for Korean Challenger players coming over is winning MVPs, both Berserker and Quid, as you mentioned. So that should be the expectation for Thanatos in the next year or so, right? Now we have seen, at the same time, players come in and come through the league in the situation from that import slot. We've seen Vikla. We've seen a different situation. Same team, Prince, right? We could talk about yeah. both of those. Challenger guys players over. only. The actual LCK players are washed, right? That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's how it seems to play out for us right now. I thought one of the interesting angles to look at with this one is that uh, Thanatos was our, you know, also in a conversation. D plus was looking at shipping him off to K Corp was going to be a possibility. Let's just say very happy that he's moving to Cloud9 because I think at the very point with this Cloud9, not only do we feel like the whole package around it is going to better support it, but you've got an opportunity to do something with Cloud9. With K Corp in this situation with what is ahead of them in summer, most likely not a lot other than headaches would be coming your way if you signed on with K Corp. Can you so, imagine? And you're also probably getting some of that good NA money from Mr. Well, Jack. I think it was probably a short talk when Cloud9 called. He said, uh, we'll give you more money and you'll be on a better team. Huh. Well, that that seems like a pretty good <laughs> selling hangs point. up the K-Corp <laughs> phone. That's pretty good. Can you imagine poor Bo now having to try and speak to a Korean player when he's already speaking his second language, trying to direct the whole team? No way. No way. You can't do that to the poor man. Can't do that. I think overall, good to see that K Corp is being proactive in the market, especially looking at very highly, you know, hyped up and and, and touted prospects like Thanatos has been for D plus, as you mentioned before. Considered to take that starting role at the start of the year for the team. Didn't want to roll with double rookies in it. And I think it's a situation of having seen that Lucid is going to be stable in these early parts of his career at the LCK level for them. That gives them the confidence to move on in this situation and say, okay, let's take a cash in. Because you know what? I bet it's a pretty darn good penny for a squad uh, like D plus Kia to collect that money when he's a challenger player. Yeah, and I mean, it's probably win-win. D-plus still get a decent payday for a challenger, and you're not paying nearly whatever money you would for a starting LCK player. Uh, so win-win across the board there. But now you look at next year or next split, and if Cloud9 flounders again, I feel like it's probably JoJo Pion that's right on the next on the chopping block in terms of who's been an issue. I think it's going to be both uh, the examination of that mid-jungle is going to come through. Of course, Blabber does have a little bit more, I think, runway room for Cloud9 just due to his history with the organization, his time there, these type of things. And then you might even throw Vulcan in that situation yeah. as well, whether he can really find that synergy. I think only for the briefest of moments did we see the true Vulcan, the Vulcan that we have seen be one of the top threats in that support position, one of the most creative in that support position in the LCS. Need to get back to that type of level if he's going to stick with this team, given what we know is the aspirations. It's at the very least got to be a wake-up call for those three players to see Mithy, who's been there for so long, and that's usually the easy solution in both esports and traditional sports is just can the head coach it's always their fault right but i think reaper coming in 
Him and Jack probably, you know, they had the memes a while ago about implementing the Cloud9 system. But I feel like he's going to come in with the statement that you guys are way too good to be finishing third in the LCS. With Thanatos coming in now, we should be winning the summer split, be that first seed at Worlds. And I feel like the four returning members are going to be hungry to prove themselves again. And, with, you know, again, as you mentioned, you know, yes, there's one thing about the message about getting rid of Mithy, but it also is another thing, getting rid of Mr. Fudge in the top side and moving on and, and the way that you are and all these other things. Of course, there's all the pauses that we've laid out for sure. But you still have to look at it and say, well, look, if Jack is ready to see the disappointment and be as angry as he was with the performance that we had through that spring split, to make the moves of not only, okay, replacing Mithy, sure, a little bit more understandable, easier type of move, but moving on from the second longest, maybe the longest, I uh, blabber probably, second longest tenured player on this team and make a change like that and make a risk that you are making, which yes, as much as we're positive about this, there is some risk of course, always involved with making a change like this. You better believe that he's going to be ready to pull the trigger on any one of these contracts. Especially when Fudge is a guy that we've heard players in the organization, the organization themselves, talking about how big an impact he has off the rift, behind the scenes with the team. He's one of the most liked guys within the team and is constantly boosting morale. So obviously, yeah, a decision not taken lightly, I'm sure, to be getting rid of a favorite in Fudge. But it's a business Cloud9 trying to win, and this, again, we're probably going to go into next split, and everyone's going to have them as the favorites now. I, I can fully see that, and I'm right there with them. And I'm, I'm going to make that mistake, too, with everybody else. But I'm telling you, this is going to be a different thing, what we've seen for Cloud9. And this is exactly what I think a lot of people maybe were asking for in the offseason, heading into this year and what they were going to get, and especially in the immediacy following the disappointment of this spring split. This is what people were asking for Cloud9 to do, but you got it. Let's see what we got for us in summer with it. You're going to have the highest expectations and pressure from a third place finishing team of all time heading into the summer split. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out. and We'll catch you on that flippity flip.